Welcome back to another Debaco University video, here looking at different types of glass. And we see three general categories provided here, annealed, tempered, and laminated, along with some properties listed below them, but we're going to go into even more detail here. So first, starting with, well, how is glass made? Well, glass is a hard, brittle, amorphous, which means its molecules lack organization material. So it's made from fused inorganic materials by melting sand, lime, and sodi sodium carbonate at very high temperatures. This varies in elemental form, again, depending on what type of glass, and as a result, many shapes and colors can be derived uh, in glass, as we see here with all the various birds um, and various ornamentals of glass, uh, and here's the manufacturing process as well. So sodi soda lime glass. So this is the most common type of glass, which accounts for 90% of manufactured glass. So if you're finding this type at a crime scene, it may not be the best at kind of getting into this very, something very specific, uh, but it can still provide other valuable trace evidence by linking someone to a crime scene. The reason why it's so common is it's found in window panes, beverage bottles, and light bulbs. It has a density of 2.44 grams per cubic centimeter. Then we have a borosilicate glass. This melts at a higher temperature. Uh, than typical silicate glass. So it's used in cookware and lab equipment, such as beakers, where high heat tends to be involved. It's also known by its trade name, Pyrex, since 1915, and that's what a lot of the beakers here um, are made of, or even this uh, measuring cup here, we see Pyrex listed uh, right in the center. It has a density very similar to the sodium lime glass at 2.23 grams per centimeter cubed. Then we have leaded glass. So this is fine glassware and decorative art glass called crystal leaded glass. Sometimes it substitutes um, lead oxide for calcium oxide or lime to make it a little bit more environmentally friendly. The addition of lead oxide makes the glass denser. And as light passes through the more dense glass, the light uh, waves are bent. And this gives the glass that sparkling effect. So really important for its visual characteristics, but now can also be used to tie in when you're collecting it potentially as trace evidence. We also have tempered or safety glass. So this is stronger than ordinary glass by introducing stresses through rapid heating and cooling of the glass surface. And when tempered glass breaks, it doesn't shatter, but rather it fragments or dices into small squares with little splintering. It's used for side and rear windows and automobiles sold in the United States. Keep in mind it's the side and the rear. And if you look at it through a polarizing lens or if you're wearing sunglasses and sometimes kind of tilt your head a little bit to one side or the other, you can kind of see that kind of tempered or safety glass. It has a certain look to it, in particular looking here at the um, rear um, car window. Now it's important I said side and rear a car window because laminated glass is the glass used on the front windshield. And laminated glass uh, derives its strength by sandwiching one layer of plastic between two pieces of ordinary window glass. It's, uh, the windshields of all cars manufactured in the United States are constructed of this laminated glass because as a result, you can kind of see here, um, it doesn't shatter and break through, it kind of fractures but stays together, which is very important for the windshield so nothing's coming at the driver or passengers. Then we have bulletproof glass, and as the name implies, looking at resisting the impact from bullets. Uh, it achieves this by a combination of two or more types of glass, one hard and one, and one soft. The softer layer makes the glass more elastic so it can flex instead of shattering. The index of refraction for both the layers must be very similar though. This is to keep the glass transparent and allow a clear view through the glass. This is why looking at this glass in particular very quickly, won't be able, you won't be able to quickly identify it as being bulletproof or not because it should look like normal glass. The bulletproof glass does vary in thickness from three quarters of an inch to three inches, and that can depend how many layers there are. And this is a rough kind of uh, depiction here, a bulletproof glass composed of layers of plastic sheeting, which would be the gray, and then layers of actual typical glass, and that would be the blue. Um, and it will resist, depending on how many layers, the caliber or the force of impact, uh, how much will it resist that um, bullet that's coming at it. Then we have optical or flint glass, and this has a high refractive index, an RA of 1.45 to 2.0. A disposal um, poses a pollution problem for older glass 
manufactured of this type because they tend to contain lead to oxide. Now titanium dioxide and zirconium dioxides are used, making it less of an issue while still maintaining its great optical properties. Also used to make simulated uh, diamonds because it has this very clear um, high refractive index. Light dispersion here in the image above me is looking at the mercury vapor lamp in a prism made of flint glass. Again, that really high optical quality. And lastly, we have mirrored glass. And this is glass that's been treated with metallic substances, creating mirror-like properties. This can be so we can be able to see ourselves in the morning. Um, this is just another type of mirrored or reflective glass. And all of these have the potential to be found at a crime scene. So now that you're well-versed in them, uh, when you're picking up these pieces of trace evidence, you can make these connections, potentially identify the type of glass and where it might be found at a crime scene.